Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. When was the last time I talked about FedNow? Do you guys remember FedNow? It really hasn't been in the news, as far as I can recall, since August of last year, 2019. And I'm going to get everybody caught up to speed on what this is, but essentially it's the United States federal government developing a new uh, settlement system uh, for domestic payments within the United States. And there was tons of speculation, and there were a, just a number of articles, especially in the world of crypto, about what this might mean for Ripple and XRP. Would Ripple technology be used? Would XRP be used for settlement? Well, I, I said back then, no. The, the, answer, the answer is no, especially for, for XRP. And it, I want to be clear here, like I am Mr. XRP Bull, but this is not a Hopium channel. Uh, this channel is for people that, uh, you know, appreciate what I would perceive as presenting at least a reasoned approach to all of this. Look, because here's how I look at the, the space. Look, I think that there are so many amazing things happening around what, what Ripple's actually building here with RippleNet and so many incredible developments with the real world adoption of XRP. It's already so mind blowing. You don't need the hype. You really don't. And so I just want everybody to stay on track. And so uh, it seems to me, it did back then and it still does today, that there's just a lot of dot connecting that, that just didn't really actually functionally make any sense here. And so we have this brand new article today from the Federal Reserve. You can see this is federalreserve.gov titled Federal Reserve Announces Details of New 24-7, 365 Interbank Settlement Service with Clearing Functionality to Support Instant Payments in the United States. But before I go any further, if you would please delicately tap that like button, and also if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP and really appreciate news and analysis while avoiding the hype, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel because that is what you're going to find here. And so, to be clear, and we got to go back, I need to properly set the table here. If you think I'm kidding, like, there were a lot of articles a year ago about Ripple and XRP, like, just being thrown into this whole thing, this whole FedNow system. And, and mind you, just so that you guys know, the federal government already has a, a settlement system. Are you aware of this? It's called FedWire. Now, it's not exactly the best system and, and I'm, look admittedly i don't know all the internal workings of the plumbing but even the federal government saw that there was substantial room for improvement and with this new system that they're they're launching uh they say within the next few years but it's the federal government so maybe it'll be like 10 or 15 years from now i don't know i'm just saying um they're they're going for just round the clock service here and it's supposed to be much more efficient um, and so presumably this would come from a messaging side so why is it that I was very firm on XRP not being needed from the get-go? Well, let's just let's just squash that one right here because that might be the biggest question that you're asking. And then we can talk about Ripple's implementation here because because Ripple, you know, they they, can, they do messaging software, obviously, right? But um, as far as XRP, you got to fundamentally understand what XRP is being positioned to be used for, which by Ripple anyway, which is as a bridge currency. When you're talking about settlement. Well, whether it's on Fedwire or this new service FedNow, which is allegedly coming out within the next few years. We'll see. I'm skeptical. <laughs> Timelines and budgets, man, with the government. Usually not such good stuff. But uh, we're talking about domestic payments. So if you understand that XRP can be functionally useful in converting the United States dollar into, for instance, the Mexican peso, then tell me where the utility is in converting the United States dollar into the United States dollar with XRP as a bridge. Hopefully that already doesn't make sense to you. Now, I know there are a lot of new people to the space, especially within the last several weeks or so, so that are, are still trying to get a grasp on how this all works. But, uh, and so suffice it, I can sum it up real quick. I'll be real brief with this. So basically the way XRP is to be used, you can imagine that, uh, and this is all automated on RippleNet utilizing on-demand liquidity, which uses XRP as a bridge currency, but uh, you have a cryptocurrency exchange uh, so there's a transaction initiated, let's just say in the United States on Bitstamp, and then XRP is automatically purchased using uh, and it's just really whatever the most efficient path is, uh, price-wise included, certainly. And then that XRP would be transferred to a different cryptocurrency exchange in, in this example, Bitso, which is 
um, a partner exchange with Ripple in Mexico. And then that would be converted to the peso on local rails right there. And it's, it's, it's effectively real time, even if it takes a few minutes. Because uh, look, XRP, it transfers in you know three to five seconds, whatever it is. It's very quick. Local rails can take a little bit more time. So maybe it would take a few minutes, but it's, it's much faster than the traditional legacy system with Swift here, right? And so you can see how that's fundamentally useful right there. But when you're talking about the United States dollar transferring to another bank that also deals in the United States dollar, you don't need a bridge. It's already the United States dollar. So it's already right there. When people were talking about XRP being used within this new FedNow system, I was like, sorry, guys, that don't make no damn sense. So I was like, like tap the brakes, tap the brakes. It just doesn't make any sense. So I talked about that a year ago. And um, and I, I can appreciate the enthusiasm. So like, don't get me wrong, but I, I just want to speak truth here. And like I keep saying, like there really is there's so many reasons to be excited about what's going on with Ripple and XRP. Let's just do our best to get to the truth. And I think a lot of the people that were bringing that up, they were just trying to get to the truth, but maybe didn't have a, a fundamental understanding of exactly why XRP is being positioned by Ripple the way that it is, which would lead to beliefs that perhaps XRP could be, could be used in the FedNow system. Totally get it, but that's not what's happening here. And so you can see this. Piece was from uh, Bitboy Crypto. Uh, where's the date? It just says ten months ago, which sounds about right here. And you can see here, um, there's probably something about Ripple in here too. I think I read this earlier. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. In August, the Federal Reserve announced its plans to create a 24/7 digital payment settlement system. The name of the project, FedNow, will help expedite the process of settling payments. Many people in the XRP community have prognosticated that a partnership between the U.S. Federal Reserve and Ripple is inevitable. It looks like those calls may have been premature. There you go. So that's one piece talking about this. And indeed, it's definitely premature. Um, here's another one. Um, and, and by the way, of course, I understand that Ripple is closely working with government officials, and I'm not, I'm not stating that there wouldn't be some sort of software tie-in ultimately, which I'll touch on in just a second here, but as far as XRP, no, it, it's functionally not useful here. Here's another piece from uh, CryptoPotato.com, and this one's from November 13th, 2019. And uh, they talk about Ripple in this one somewhere, too. Oh, yeah, it's in the title, right? Is the Federal Reserve's FedNow project bullish for Ripple? Um, and then you can see here again, the Ripple community seems to be thrilled about the new settlement service. And it's true. I, I'm part of the XRP community, and I saw all the excitement and the, um, the theorizing back in the day. And it's happening again now as this, you know, as it's been in the news again today. And I just, the answer, the answer is just no, though. Um, take a look at this piece from Cointelegraph. We can dig in a little bit further here. And by the way, I wanted to mention this, too. Uh, this guy named Juan Villaverde, I think is his name. Where is he? Villaverde. There we go. Uh, senior crypto analyst at Weiss Ratings. Um, wow, this guy, like, this makes me think, like, I, I want to trust Weiss Ratings even less because they functionally don't understand what Ripple and XRP are being positioned here for. So uh, Villa Verde noted that the new payment system could undermine what Ripple is trying to achieve. And I'm just like, oh, face palm, you don't know what you're talking about. Here's his quote. The reality is the traditional financial system is based on trust and reputation. For most institutional participants, Ripple, as any other newcomer, lacks in both. And the Federal Reserve upgrades its, I'm sorry, if the Federal Reserve upgrades its systems to mimic some of the utility of RippleNet, this would severely undermine Ripple's future chance of success. Our view with Ripple has long been that they need to pivot away from catering strictly to financial institutions and focus more on providing financial products and services directly to the public. So right there, a couple things. They're saying that uh, Ripple's entire business model, which is to solve the train wreck that is the world of global cross-border payments, they're effectively saying, no, don't do that. Change your entire business model and shift to somehow servicing the public in some sort of ambiguous way. That's what he said there. So freaking weird. You might as well say, Ripple, stop trying to solve the train wreck that is the world of cross global cross-border payments and start selling pepperoni pizzas. That's how unreal, like, it makes no damn sense in the world here. And then it was the other part that I wanted to kind of rip apart here. If the Federal Reserve upgrades its systems to mimic some of the utility of RippleNet, oh yeah, this would severely undermine Ripple's future chance of success. No, this is a these are payments rails, payment rails that already exist today. <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, a Fedwire is doing a, a, a lot of this. And you're talking about upgrading the system to something called FedNow, continuing to do the same thing, while Ripple is is built a messaging and settlement platform called RippleNet 
which is not focusing on this. This has nothing to do with Ripple's plans whatsoever. Now, thankfully, somebody else uh, came in here. Uh, I'm not going to butcher the name. Guo, G-U-O, Guo. I don't know how to say that. Of uh, Cypherium disagrees with that assumption, telling Cointelegraph that the two systems are targeting different customers and are therefore not in direct competition. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. At least some truth got out. And this is Cointelegraph, which isn't the worst about Ripple and XRP, but sometimes some craziness gets through on their platform. But anyway, here's the quote. Ripple is for cross-border payments, while FedNow is for U.S. domestic. The Fed already has a settlement system, Fedwire, working in conjunction with the clearinghouse. The competition landscape is unlikely to change. Thank you. I just want to look. I just want to get the truth out there. Like, we don't need hopium, guys. We really don't. I think. And look, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't have a financial background. Don't buy or sell because of anything I say. I write. Period. But I firmly believe XRP can be worth substantially more than it is today. I think that it will for a ton of reasons, which I will talk about more in other videos and have talked about in the past. This isn't. This is not one of them. It isn't. And that that should be okay. That needs to be okay because. If it's not okay, then you've got to be living in Looney Tunes land, frankly. Like, that's right. I hope that's fair to you guys, right? I hope that seems reasonable to you. I mean, if, you, if you're if you being intellectually honest, then you want to get to the truth. This is the truth. And, and you're going to get it. You're not going to get that the, the crazy hype that you might get some other places on this channel. You're just not going to get it. And uh, I want to thank Galgatron. He didn't tag me in this, but this is how I came across this piece today. And Galgatron, member of the XRP community who has a wealth of knowledge, my God, he really does. He wrote, the FedNow system will not use Ripple or XRP. And then he linked to this piece right here, which came out today, uh, which reads, I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but just the top part. The Federal Reserve Board on Thursday announced details of the FedNow service, a new 24-7, 365 interbank settlement service with clearing functionality to support instant payments in the United States. The features and functionality described in the accompanying Federal Register notice represent a key milestone in the FedNow services de development and are based on input received from the public in response to the board's 2019 request for comment. The Federal Reserve will take a phased approach to service implementation. Uh, the first release of the FedNow service will provide core clearing and settlement features that will support market needs and help banks manage the transition to 24-7, 365 service. So look, as, as, as far as what's going on here in terms of settlement, like it, no stro counts are needed when you're talking about cross-border payments, you know? So I don't even think we're talking about that here. You're just talking about messaging between, and and obviously there still need to be relationships between banks, so maybe that maybe that's involved. There'd just be in a different way because you're, you're not having to hold a, a different currency. So that, that part would most certainly be different here. But it's it's the federal government, to be clear, is not taking on the business model of Ripple. They absolutely are not. What would their incentive be to even do something like that? It's like it's not happening, guys. They're not going to run a business like that. And you can argue whether or not they should be doing what they're doing here. I'm not going to get into that. I'd be willing to have a discussion on that. That could be kind of interesting. But uh, Galgatron then wrote, I should add that it was never going to be RippleNet behind the scenes. This hopium dot connecting S word just keeps coming around and around, but it's old news, not bad news. Exactly. It's, it's, it, this is not bad news, but is it not worth acknowledging reality here? All right, I think there's one more tweet that I wanted to share with you here before wrapping up here. I think it maybe is it down a little bit. If I can find it real quickly, I'll share it with you. Um, it might have been this one here. Um, was it? I apologize. I thought I. I thought there was another one in here. Maybe it was this one. Uh, let me read it, and I'll see if this is it. I'll tell you yes or no. Galgatron wrote in response to uh, Enigma, who wrote, uh, At some point, uh, Fed voted four against one to not use RippleNet, so there were doubts at some point. Uh, Galgatron wrote, What's your point? It's clear that RippleNet isn't ideal for domestic payments. Uh, one vote isn't a counter-argument, given how nascent and confusing this tech is, even to the financial alert. Yeah, yeah, that is the one. And so he's right. Um, I did want to, there's one little caveat to that. Um, in Japan, actually, domestically, they were actually using RippleNet. It was at the time known as XCurt, which is the messaging portion, because even their local rails just for messaging were so horrendous that they're like, hey, this uh, this XCurt thing, could we actually use that? And the answer was yes. But as far as using it domestically in the United States, the answer was always going to be no. So anyway, you can tell me what you think. I hope I didn't shatter any dreams there. But I, I, I think that most of you are really, like almost all of you, really, frankly, are just really level-headed and appreciate truth. So 
I, I feel comfortable sharing truth with you. Um, if you think I got anything wrong, I do love diversity of thought, though, so please drop a comment below. But this is the way that I'm looking at it, and I, I think I nailed it. But, but you, you let me know. You let me know. Uh, but that is it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.